colleges and all the rest of their program more deeply underground and they're spreading it out. So uh, with every passing day, we get closer to, to, to a time when it's going to be very hard and ultimately impossible to stop this program. So that's why the clock is ticking and it's an ominous clock and the, the Iranians have to know how seriously we and the rest of the world take what they're doing. General Jack Keane is a retired four-star general, also a Fox News military analyst. And uh, General Keane, what Senator Lieberman said really caught our attention, saying that Iran was spreading out its centrifuges, going deeper underground. And so we had the question about if that's is the situation in Iran, then, then what does a military option really look like when you want to destroy those facilities, if that's the plan? Well, I think short of military action, there's lots we can do. Covert operations, obviously, cyber attack against economic and military targets, espionage against the facilities themselves, and some of that has already taken place. And, and clearly, we should be targeting the, the Quds Force uh, leadership as well. In terms of military operations, um, clearly that would be limited primarily to an airstrike. There may be some espionage uh, conducted alongside of it um, a, as well, but it would be airstrike. There are multiple targets, not a single target. Some of them are deeply buried, as you indicated. Uh, we do have deep penetrators that can get underneath the ground. It's essentially a physics problem that's been going on for about 20 years. When we developed precision weapons, bombs that is, our adversaries started to go deeper and build better fortifications deeper. And then we had to get better penetrators to reach them. And this has been going on back and forth now, uh, as I said, for almost two decades. You know, one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you as an expert in this field is that there seems to be this perception that a, that a military option or airstrikes would just be quick and easy, that it wouldn't be that much of a commitment. And it, again, it just seems to be a general perception. Is that accurate? Well, first of all, it, it would probably be an air campaign as opposed to an airstrike. The Iranians have sophisticated air defenses that we would probably have. And what's the difference, by the way? I'm sorry, General, but what's the difference between an air campaign and an airstrike? Air campaigns longer, more involved? Yeah, sure. Longer, more planes. Um, it's a complicated operation, to say, to say the least. We would want to strip away their air defenses. We do have stealth bombers that can penetrate those air defense systems, but I would suspect we'd want to take some of those systems down. It would involve multiple strikes over a, a period of time. It's, it's not going to be something that we saw the Israelis do against Syria or against uh, Iraq, where they conducted a single strike operation against a single target. This is multiple targets, much more complicated. As a general, when would you know that now is the right moment to launch that air campaign? What would be the sign? Well, I, I, I think, first of all, we have to recognize that the Israelis are most likely to do this uh, prior to our involvement. And they have stated to our officials that that is months away. Uh, the Israelis believe a little differently on, on the time assessment than we do. We think they're a year or two to weaponization. And the Israelis uh, think that's actually sometime this year. So they're looking to do something if we believe what they've said publicly in a matter of months as opposed mm -hmm. to uh, next year. Did you ever think in your lifetime that you would see you would see the United States go to war with Iran? Is that something that you really thought you would see? Well, as a military officer on active duty for 37 years, we planned uh, to go to war with Iraq in scenarios as you would, ex with Iran in scenarios as you would expect us to do. We've done that for many years. It's one of the likely possibilities that are out there. I think we've been on a collision course with Iran since 1980 when they declared us their strategic number one enemy in the world and they've been using state-sponsored terrorism against us through their proxies for 30 years and it's not going to stop. We're on a collision course with the Iranians and I think it's inevitable that we will have some kind of conflict with them. You give us some real perspective to think about, General. We really appreciate uh, you joining us today and look forward to having you back. Thank you. Okay, Jenna, it's good seeing you.